Hi there. If you're studying globalisation and fiscal policy, uh, you'll need to know that transfer pricing is one of the hot issues, the really big issues of the day. So this video spends a few minutes looking at what transfer pricing is, how it works, and what in particular might be done about it. So transfer pricing is controversial because essentially it can be used to manipulate the taxable income that businesses face and therefore ways in which people and businesses in particular avoid paying tax. So transfer pricing is used by transnational or multinational companies, corporations to legally reduce their tax liability and thus they pay less tax to a nation's government. It's basically a form of accounting which allows one part of a business, we sometimes call it a division or a subsidiary of an international company, to charge a price or a fee for the goods and services uh, to another part of the same company, but operating in a different country. So transnational corporations, or TNCs, they use this transfer pricing technique to allocate earnings and cost to different parts of their company. And it is controversial because it leads to profits being shifted to countries with perhaps lower corporation tax. So let's work through a, a little example of transfer pricing. Take your time on this one. Make sure that you understand how this works. Let's consider a transnational uh, car maker, Toyota, whatever it is, making engines in country A. Now, country A is a high tax country. Division A, based in country A, sells some engines to the assembly line, which is also owned by the same car manufacturer, but that assembly line is located in country B, which is a low-tax country. So country A is a high-tax nation, country B is a low-tax economy. Now, those engines might be sold at a below-market price from Division A of the business to Division B. Don't forget, Divisions A and B are part of the same company, but they're based in different countries. And if engines are sold at a below-market price, transfer pricing, that means that Division A's revenues will be lower in country A and divisions B, Division B's costs will also be lower. Now, why does this matter? This reduces the profit that the subsidiary in Division A is making in the high-tax country. So they'll be booking lower profits in the high-tax country, but increasing profits in Division B, which is in country B, which is a low-tax country. So can you see how this is going to lead to a shifting of profits from country A to country B? So through, through transfer pricing, the car firm in this example pays less corporation tax. This is how transfer pricing can work. Some examples for you. Coca-Cola, this goes back 15, oh gosh, nearly 20 years now, and the case is still essentially in the courts. Between 27 and 2009, Coca-Cola transferred much of its IP, its intellectual property, such as brand value, to be accounted for in subsidiaries in lower tax countries, including Costa Rica, Swaziland. Mexico, Chile, Brazil, and Ireland. And the IRS, the, uh, the American Tax Authority, the equivalent of uh, the UK and the revenue, is still taking legal action to get Coca-Cola to pay more tax in the United States. Amazon, big case, their European Union HQ is based in Luxembourg, where effectively it pays no tax. And Amazon US transferred intangible assets such as software, custom lists, and marketing to its Luxembourg subsidiary, charging for the transfer. Now, the European Union and the US tax authorities argue that this was too low and reduced America, um, Amazon's tax bill by hundreds of millions of euros. Now, this case is still going on. I think Amazon won a legal case against this extra tax bill, uh, but now the European Union is appealing to get that particular de decision thrown out. Uh, Apple, 2016, the European Union ordered Ireland to recover billions of euros in back taxes, uh, finding that the European Union claimed that Apple had used a complex web of subsidiaries to shift profits from one jurisdiction to another, therefore avoid paying taxes on some of its European earnings. Ireland, of course, is a low-tax country. Starbucks, going back a few years, uh, the European Union again found that the company that received illegal tax benefits, uh, Starbucks had paid artificially low prices for coffee beans from a subsidiary in Switzerland, allowing it to shift profits from the Netherlands to Switzerland and therefore reduce their tax liability. 
And Google, in 2019, agreed to pay over a billion dollars in back taxes to France. There had been a four-year investigation into transfer pricing. So there we go. Uh, what have we got? Coca-Cola, Amazon, Apple, Starbucks, Google. Now, those are big names. Those are big companies. Good examples to use in your exam. But I'm sure that transfer pricing happens on a much wider basis amongst businesses that you probably, you've never heard of and I've never heard of. It's out there. Why does this matter? Well, I think it matters in lots of different ways. First of all, it does encourage this accounting of transfer pricing encourages tax avoidance and evasion. Now, the, 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 the line between tax evasion and avoidance can be blurred. It's obviously up to, open to legal interpretation. But critically, transfer pricing reduces the tax base in many countries. Many governments are running big fiscal deficits and national debts are going up, particularly in the wake of the pandemic, and they need more tax revenue. And the, and the focus is shifting onto companies that are not paying their taxes. Indeed, many of these companies that are involved in transfer pricing uh, were the grateful beneficiaries or recipients of government financial support during the pandemic. It also has a consequence for development. It's estimated that around 60% of capital flight from African countries is due to transfer pricing by TNCs. And of course, that means that tax as a share of GDP is pretty low in many uh, lower middle income countries. That reduces African GDP, it reduces the fiscal revenues for the government and deprives governments of funds needed to fund improved basic human development, be it education, housing or health. Transfer pricing encourages a race to the bottom of corporation t tax rates. You can use game theory in explaining that, that if one country cuts their corporation tax, there's an incentive for another country to do the same. And fundamentally, I think it raises issues of equity and fairness. Um, transfer pricing is legal, but is it ethical? Is it equitable? Is it fair? Especially when in many countries the, the overall burden of tax facing households is going up. And in many ways, transfer pricing is one of these totemic issues which is used by people who are against globalisation and the anti-globalisation lobby. So it increases pressures for deglobalisation. Uh, in the economy. So for a variety of reasons, I think this issue really does matter. Well, what policies might be used, what interventions might be used to combat and address transfer pricing? In some countries, uh, in a good example is China, uh, the government there may require a joint venture or partial local ownership. And that's increasingly used inside the EU as well. So China, for example, if you're going to invest in China, then you'll need to partner with a local business, a domestic business. And, that, of course, the idea behind that is to keep more of the profits within the country. Governments might imp improve enforcement of laws about natural resources. You know, where do the profits from uh, palm oil uh, plantations go? Where do the profits go from the extraction of copper and, and coal? The governments may enforce national minimum wages to keep incomes high in countries. Egypt has raised the national minimum wage for transnational corporations from 41 euros to 72 euros per month. Uh, you might be have, looking to make a stronger enforcement of the international tax principle that profits should be taxed on where they're earned rather than where the firm is headquartered. And a really key point to finish with is that there has now been a multilateral, multinational agreement not yet fully in implemented on a minimum rate of corporation tax. I think it's 15% from 2025 amongst a group of leading countries to help prevent that race to the bottom. So I think for the exam, what you need to know is you need to know what transfer pricing is. You need to explain how it works, why it has economic consequences as well as social effects. And critically, just a couple of ways in which you can address and combat the issue. And also have to hand a couple of good examples. So hopefully this, this video has been useful for you. If it has, I'd love it if you press the like button so that others can find it on YouTube. For now, stay safe, stay happy, stay curious and see you sometime soon.